Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Matt and welcome to actual racing for once uh, versus me just playing over some general sim racing or arcade racing games. I decided to take you along for the ride for my own experience of being a 25 year old man finally going to my first ever actual car race as a spectator. Of course, I'm not famous enough or wealthy enough to actually go ahead to be able to race uh, competitively. Uh, one day that may be the dream, but I uh, wanted to, again, show you the story of what it was like going to Road America in Wisconsin. So I guess uh, part of the experience that not many people really discuss is the travel time. A lot of people may take uh, very long road trips to get to the race event or maybe have to fly there and stay in hotels. So my personal experience with this is that I traveled about four hours from about the western border of Wisconsin to basically the eastern border. So actually taking off about two hours or so of what should have been the normal drive time. It just traffic wasn't too bad. But then this was about Saturday afternoon into Saturday evening. We finally arrived at our hotel uh, in the outskirts of Milwaukee on the northern uh, northern suburban area. And we uh, stayed in the hotel for the evening watching the 24 hours of Le Mans. And then finally, uh, five in the morning, woke up, took showers, and uh, you know started traveling to the track. Uh, took us about 50 minutes or so so we arrived approximately about uh, 7 20 in the morning here um, and just parked up in the field and walked across the bridge and boom it was a surreal moment and it was just so odd to to be like this is this is an actual place that people go to that I've seen so much on TV and racing games and the whole rest of it so I had a couple of surreal moments just grounding myself. So after we found a good spot, uh, my dad and myself had walked around the lower part of the paddock where a lot of the lower class series, whether it be Indy 2000s, Indy Lights, or uh, the Radicals were actually setting up the car. So you could kind of see a little bit of the, the mechanics working on it. And there's actually a little bit of a tented area that showed off some of the more historic Indy cars and got a lot of history out of it. Turns out that Indy cars had history going well uh, further on than I was expecting. It sounded like it was as early as the you know, 1930s even. Uh, so surpassing even Formula One's history, which I thought it was quite difficult. So then from there, after looking at uh, quite a few really unique uh, historic vehicles, uh, part of the IndyCar history, we had uh, walked up the hill and found a couple of different little uh, merchandise shops that I'd later visit. But we actually mainly went up to the top of the hill where the Indy car uh, paddock was. We could actually see the teams prepping their vehicles, uh, turning over their engines to make sure everything ran, getting you know the oil temperatures up and then getting the correct fluids in, and just generally uh, piecing the car back together uh, after qualifying that occurred the day prior. So at this moment, uh, it was... Again, another surreal moment because I was within very close distance to a lot of uh, famous individuals. Of course, the drivers and a lot of the team principals were probably still in the trailers eating breakfast and whatnot. It was a very unique experience to be within hundreds of feet of, of absolute historic worldwide uh, celebrities and personalities. And it was... Uh, I don't think I actually passed anybody uh, in the paddock of uh, any substantial amount of fame. It was just a lot of the pit crew, unfortunately. Would have loved to be able to do, you know, autograph sessions and that kind of stuff, but, you know, paid for general admission on that one. So not, not really going to happen for the standard fan, per se. But it was also quite nice because as we were going through the paddock, we had routed the corner and went back the other way uh, down the main straight. And we we're actually taking a look at the uh, pit stops, you know, where everybody would, you know, set up and change out the tires and, you know, refill and whatnot. And it was so, so different than what I was expecting. It was interesting because all it was separating yourself from the pit crews was actually a little chain link fence. So we meandered our way back to our little, um, little spot where we had our lawn chairs set up and whatnot and actually 
started uh, watching the Formula 2000s race. I think that occurred at about 8.30. So over the course of an hour, you know, traveling around and whatnot, getting breakfast and whatnot, we finally started watching the first race of the day. Now, at this point, uh, Formula 2000s, uh, as far as like a spectator experience, you know, I want to say it's the third run on the way up to IndyCar. So it's Formula, it was uh, IndyCar 2000s and then Indy Lights. And then if you graduated from Indy Lights, you could actually race in uh, Indy cars. But much like uh, Formula 3 to Formula 2 to Formula 1, only the best of the best of the best of the best of the best actually get there. So Indy 2000s, uh, it basically was watching a bunch of go-karts go around the track. I mean, the engine notes were very high and whiny, and uh, it was it was an interesting experience to witness, you know, as a spectator. Normally, when you watch a TV program, you can see all the action on track. You can see, you know, multiple cameras at the same time. You can see cameras cutting between turn 4 and then turn 10. And as a spectator, you just sit in a spot, and you watch the cars go around. You, you see them come through turn 14, up through the main straight, and then 30 seconds go by, nothing happens, there's nothing to look at. And then again, like I was saying earlier, you could kind of turn your chair over to the left and see you know, the cars come by on turn five, go up the hill under the bridge there, and then you wait about a minute. There's not a whole lot going on, pretty much nothing. Then you hear them come down the hill, and then come around to the approach of turn 14, and there you go, that's the full lap. So again, the race was really interesting because really there is only two drivers who had led the pack, and they had a substantial gap by the end of the 15 lap race or whatnot. We, we were figuring it was about 10 seconds or so, so the, these two just took off. You know, you had the midfield that was kind of pretty tightly packed and fighting them out quite a bit. And then a couple of stragglers at the end, uh, whether it be poor starts or falling off the track or whatnot, uh, just not really tailing the pack too well. So at that point, uh, the race had ended after 15 laps. Uh, myself and my uncle got up and walked around for a little bit and grabbed uh, some IndyCar merchandise and found our way back. And then soon thereafter, the Indy Lights had started their race. So Indy Lights, uh, much like Indy... 2000. It's sort of open wheeled go karts almost. You know, a little bit more power, uh, but the engine note again was still kind of that high pitched buzzing uh, noise. So, uh, again, not that great of an experience. I bet as a driver it was really cool, um, but as a spectator, is eh, eh, okay ish. Now, the Indy Lights was an interesting race because it was it was plagued by yellow flakes constantly. It was supposed to be only like a 20 lap race, but I only think that out of the 11 laps that was um, that was raced, only two of them were under, were under green flags. So what happened is, you know, early on, you know, raced for a couple laps, and then uh, the safety car came out. And then for quite a few laps, the safety car was out and about. And then finally, it was around I don't know lap 11 where there's actually an incident at turn five. Now, for those who are following uh, this race weekend, uh, would know of this event, but uh, in short, uh, one of the drivers had gone wide into turn five, hit the rumble strip flat with their car, and it actually launched the car up, and the car had landed into the fence, ripping the fence you know, lengthways down the track. So there's quite a bit of a, a hole in the fence, and I actually did catch the moment that it occurred, and if you look quite closely down at this little blue shed, you can see the fence being torn away just, just barely. So at that point, we heard over the announcements that the the race was red flagged, and we had started seeing a little bit of a crowd uh, collect by turn five my dad and myself had just kind of waltzed on down from where we were and then saw a huge portion of the fence missing like a hundred feet and whatnot just empty and we're like wow what happened so it wasn't until uh you know the next day that we saw the replay on youtube and, and realized what had happened so that's part of the other experience uh being a spectator on the track uh was pretty much impossible to be able to tell what was happening until you go home and you watch the race yourself. So at this point, um, Dad and myself had actually gone up and 
gotten some more merchandise, got some more food and whatnot, came back and just kind of hung out and talked with her uncle uh, for about an hour, an hour and a half as we uh, waited for the Indy car race. And then finally, Lana awaited the main event of the day, the Indy car race. So the other interesting thing, too, is that with the other races, they just kind of... You heard an announcement, you know, some celebrity of some variety gave an announcement of drivers starting their engines, and then you would wait, you know, a couple of minutes, and the drivers would do their formation lap, and they'd be off and running. Uh, IndyCar had traditional celebrations, should we say. So we have, you know, the national anthem that we'd stand and, you know, you know pledge allegiance to the flag type thing, and then... With that, there was, you know, the flyover, and then, of course, an individual singing the national anthem, and then they had, you know, all sorts of different other traditional things that they did uh, to start off the race. And it, it took probably half an hour just of, of these ceremonies to go through. So finally, we get to the race. Uh, it was definitely an experience. It was... <laughs> The only thing that I can equate it to, uh, first of all, is if you've ever gone to a concert where you've seen, you know, these people that you've seen on YouTube and music videos and everything, and they're within hundreds of feet of you, and you kind of have this this moment where, you're like, oh my God, they're right there. These these worldwide personalities are just, you know, feet from me type thing. So that was the first thing. But then the second thing, also kind of like a concert is as much as you watch races or music whatnot in you know on youtube and whatnot it's nothing like actually being there because the sound of it was immense so again normally with the other indie cars uh, previously or the other indie uh, race events you know these basically modified go-kart engines you know not to be rude or, or dumbing it down for uh, the individuals really into the sport and whatnot it's just it didn't it really wasn't that much of a spectacle but when the indie cars came out these huge v8 engines just really sane and like every time that you went by it vibrated the whole ground underneath it so it, you feel it in your sternum as they went by and that's the closest thing I could equate it to, like, going to a concert and then, like, when the bass kicks in, you know, it vibrates your sternum. It's just incredible that you can't get the same experience uh, watching it on YouTube or, you know, music videos or anything like that. You just, you just can't get that same experience. So finally, the race is, uh, starts, and it was actually a pretty decent race. You know, there was a couple of moments where, you know, people would fall off the track and You'd have these incidents, and uh, a good portion of them I actually did catch because, again, they are within, you know, turn 14 and turn 5 one, not where we had, you know, access to see them, which was pretty neat. So then partway through the race, uh, Dad and myself had actually gone up to the uh, pit lane and uh, kind of walked around seeing if we could witness a team bringing in their car and, and doing a pit stop and whatnot. The thing that I found interesting about this part was the amount of waiting. So the actual pit crew spends 99.5% of the time just waiting for the cars. So you as the spectator are waiting with them and trying to figure out by watching the pit crews and, and the team principals and whatnot, trying to figure out when the pit stops are going to happen. And hindsight is 20-20, but a part of, you know, our uncle had made mention that you watch for uh, the pit crew grabbing the lawn poles, the lawn flags, and at that time, my dad and myself completely missed that. So we were just standing and watching a single pit crew, and you'd see them stand up and then go over the wall, and you're thinking, oh, we're about to get it. And then three laps go by, and they're still standing there, and you're like, um, okay. And then within like 15 seconds you know the car comes in tires are changed the car is refilled you know tire does you know car does a little bit of a burnout and you know warms up the tires and speeds on out and that's it and it's like wow i i spent like 20 minutes waiting for that great <laughs> so after uh looking at a couple of teams watching their cars go in and come out and whatnot uh, then we walked our way down to the uh, our spot where we were had some more food 
and just kind of enjoyed ourselves watching the rest of the race. You know, a couple more yellow flags you know, nor- towards the end. Um, you know, Pato Award had actually fallen off the track and, and had some mechanical issues, and that was where one of the last safety cars was. But part of the experience, too, is, again, kind of being in the dark, not knowing what's happening. So you really have to pay attention to both the announcements going on and just kind of the visuals of like, hey, you know, I saw this car and this car in first, and then I swore I saw like the yellow car in third, and then like a green car in fourth, and just kind of watching throughout the throughout it all. It was it was kind of fun because towards the end, I was watching uh, Roman Grosjean uh, tailing uh, Felix uh, Rosenquist um, for multiple laps, and finally, 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 I you know just watching them i'd seen the green car of uh, roman grosjean you know finally passed and i freaked out i'm like ah he finally made the pass because i'd been seeing him tailing them for about 10 laps or so to finally see that the pass was made at some point in time yeah who knows but it was it was part of the experience it was really fun to see and at that point um the race had ended and my phone had died so i not been able to capture any more footage but went down to um the podium you know and seeing um joseph newgarden you know celebrate winning a million dollars because he had won an oval a street circuit and a a road course but then uh, having to promptly uh give it away or donate it to a local charity by the sounds of it and at that point that was that was the day you know at that at that point i want to say that the indie lights had started it up again to finish up their race for of, of only nine laps or so and then shortly after that uh race and the the radicals had uh started up and started racing so we had made our way back to our truck you know waited for our uncle to uh take photos with the race winner and then, you know, made our way back to uh, the western border of Wisconsin. So taking about six, seven hours on the way back because it got lost a little bit. And then it was just, you know, Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening traffic. So everybody coming back from their campers and, you know, wherever they were in Wisconsin, you know, clocking up the freeways and whatnot. But all in all, it was a weekend to remember. I was kind of a spur of a moment thing to go with uh, my dad and my, my uncle, but it was something that I would recommend that any any racing fan experience. It doesn't matter if you go watch NASCAR, if you go watch Formula Drift, or if you watch Formula One, or you know IMSA, or any of that. Just go to a, an event once to say that you've been there, and you'll kind of see what I mean about um, just kind of the the event of being there and, and being a spectator. So that was kind of my little diary log of uh, going to Road America to view the Indy Car Race. So if you enjoyed this content, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, of course, it'll be mainly for sim racing and arcade racing content. Uh, no more uh, diary logs of uh, race events for a little bit yet. Maybe next year sometime when we go back to Road America, we'll see. Uh, but again, if you enjoyed this, like, comment, and subscribe. And of course, you know, thanks so much for watching. Hope you guys have a great day today. Take care. Bye.